Welcome to this brand new episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. This podcast is hosted by Mark van Horek and myself, Elias Krum, and brought to you by Marketing Guys, the MarTech agency based out of the Netherlands. Welcome to this new podcast series on meaningful commerce. Today I have with me Claudia. Claudia Hello. Pas. Claudia is our business development manager. Uh, sitting in the same room for a change because typically I have interviews over Zoom, but uh, we're in the same room today. And it's uh, such a pleasure to have a colleague here on uh, the podcast for once. Yeah. Claudia, could you, before we dive into meaningful commerce and what that means, uh, we have a whole series on meaning, meaningful commerce, but before we dive into that, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. I'm Claudia Pass. I started working with Marketing Guys in uh, June this year, so for uh, almost half a year now. Um, I'm 35 and uh, I have uh, made a career switch. Uh, the first nine years of my working life, I worked at L'Oreal, um, a big uh, multinational company, uh, also in sales. Uh, but I was a key account manager always. Um, and uh, from June this year, I switched to marketing guys. And now I'm responsible for the, uh, as a business development manager. So for actually all the commercial activities, getting new clients on board and, um, uh, well, helping our current clients. Uh, um, yeah. So that's in a nutshell who cool. I am and what I do. Cool. Cool. So um, you have been with us for just half a year. Um, and during this period, this time, we introduced a meaningful commerce concept. And um, we've introduced it ourselves. Uh, we are introducing it on the website. Um, for those listeners that have not uh, seen anything about meaningful commerce before, please go to the website, marketingguys.com, and you can find the framework, etc. But for those listeners that are unaware of what meaningful commerce is, uh, Claudia, what does meaningful commerce mean to you? For me, meaningful commerce means uh, treating our clients the way that I would also like to be treated. Um, so it's uh, it's a way of doing uh, commerce and being commercially active, but um, by staying true to what you uh, what you feel and also um, how you would like to be treated if you were to be the client. And I must say that this is also for me, one of the important things, uh, why I wanted to switch to marketing guys, because I saw that they also, uh, or we also, uh, use this in the advertisement for uh, the business development manager. And, um, well, as a salesperson, you can be very, um, well, red, maybe if we talk in colors. Um, but for me, there's also a very, very big green aspect um, uh, important in sales. And I think meaningful commerce for me is very important in this to treat your clients the way you want it to be treated as well. Cool. Cool. So uh, I think that explains it pretty, pretty well. Um, that also uh, leads to the question, what, what, what is non-meaningful? And could you give some examples of, of ways that maybe you have been treated that you well basically didn't about how you did not want to be treated how, or have you seen anything in practice that that you didn't like or that you felt like uh, is more more like a, a way of approaching people that is non meaningful yeah so i mean in sales of course um you need to uh, to achieve your targets um but sometimes what you see is that you have to get a message across to your client that you're actually not okay with yourself, uh, that are being uh, brought to you by a top management level or things that you're just not feeling okay with. Um, and I think uh, doing meaningful commerce means uh, that you don't do that as well, um, which makes sales actually a lot more fun for me. Uh, because, well, having to get a message across that you're actually internally not feeling okay with is always a lot more difficult to do than, yeah, when you're okay with what you're selling, because then you're not selling it and you're truly believing that you're uh, providing value for your clients. Love that. So what you're saying here is that it, it doesn't only involve the commercial, commercial process towards prospects, but it also involves yourself maybe other stakeholders. And that's what the Meaningful Commerce framework and Meaningful Commerce approach is about, right? So it's about 
all those involved and and, and treat each other the way you would like to be treated yourself. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. So um, how was life in sales before meaningful for you? Um, so what the biggest uh, change that I mentioned or that I noticed uh, before we had the meaningful approach, um, for example, all our forms on our website were uh, gated. So uh, it means that you got more leads because um, uh, all the documents that were being downloaded, uh, I received a message in my inbox saying, hey, uh, you have a new lead. Somebody downloaded this. Um, and what I actually noticed was that it takes a lot of time to follow up on those leads you need to figure out what uh, where they're from what company what do they use what could be um things that you can talk about uh, uh in a first meeting um and what i what i noticed was a lot of those leads were actually not in the right stage of the funnel yet because they weren't um uh, they weren't there yet to talk about switching their marketing automation or marketing uh services so it took me a lot of time to follow up on them without actually any results. So before we were meaningful to answer your question, we maybe got more leads, um, but not as um, qualified. Correct. So, and that's what uh, research uh, by Forrester and uh, Gardner shows over and over again, especially the Forrester research that we based uh, the framework on or partly based on um, shows that um especially younger people and with younger i mean millennial millennials gen, gen z gen alpha um doesn't necessarily want to speak to salespeople before they're they made up their mind so about um 90 maybe 80 90 of the whole customer journey especially the awareness phase is done online in a self-service way so they want to uh, be able to uh, pick out the solutions, evaluate the solutions themselves. They don't necessarily want to talk to salespeople yet. Over 55% of people don't want to talk to salespeople at all. That's a McKinsey research. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what you're saying is that this approach actually, actually works. So the consideration phase, that's actually where they do want to talk to uh, sales. So one of the things that... This, this research also pointed out is that although those people want to uh, be self-service or self-serviced in the awareness phase, they do want to talk to a knowledgeable sales representative or account manager or business development manager in the consideration phase. Yeah. So after they made up made up their mind, they have specific questions. And the research points out that you need to be knowledgeable as sales. So you can't put an SDR there that just want that just has the task to, for example, make an appointment or do an evaluation or something st standard. Have you seen that in practice as well? That people have questions that are more specific. Yeah, um, and they already made up their mind a bit about the fact that, for example, for marketing automation, they want to switch and they did their research already. Uh, so they're more knowledgeable and they also want to talk to somebody that really knows what they're talking about. So mm -hmm. that's why um, I also tend to include uh, our specialists or our, our consultants uh, to those conversations because they are, uh, well, the ones that are uh, the most knowledgeable cool so yeah um those those conversations tend to be more specific and i tell this to b2b marketers over and over again because the typical call to action on a b2b professional services or a SaaS website is schedule a demo mm -hmm. uh, and everyone in the audience knows that this is not actually to show you a demo it's actually a call to qualify you as a potential buyer um and and uh, well, the meaningful commerce approach basically solves that. Um, finally, uh, before we conclude this interview, I'd like to hear or learn from you if there's any tips and tricks or specific things that you've seen. You've done this for a couple of months now. So what can you share with the audience that they can learn from? 
I think there are two things that are important. First of all, um, you maybe receive less leads because uh, all the people that are in the awareness phase uh, are not uh, downloading your forms gated anymore. Uh, that does mean that you need to have uh, a system in place to uh, keep on yeah, warming up those people uh, before they reach to the consideration phase because you don't want to lose them. So I saw that marketing automation is... Uh, actually more important in this way of doing a meaningful commerce because you um, you will only get a notification once they're already in the uh, consideration phase. So I think that is a learning. And then a second learning, what I uh, saw with our clients is that it increases the uh, customer lifetime value because your clients are more, well, are happy that you treat them the way that they would want to be treated as well. And by being uh, meaningful, we see that uh, the value that they spend with us actually increases um, and they tend to be our clients for a longer period of time. So I think those are the two, well, tips or tricks or learnings that I had uh, in this past six months. Thank you, Claudia, for this interview. I will uh, put a link in the show notes to your LinkedIn profile, yeah. um, as well as to Marketing Guys website where you can learn anything, everything about the uh, Meaningful Commerce approach. And you can also download the framework without a form, without a form yep. catch or whatsoever. So feel free to use it in any way uh, you can. And thanks again, Claudia, for being on the podcast. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform or iTunes. Also, if you want to be a guest or know someone that should be a guest to our show, shoot me an email on e.crum at marketingguys.nl. Thank you for listening.